previously on Rogue Life. There is one thing that has some truth to it. Valhalla. I pointed my flashlight at the source of the heat and found a metallic sphere, about eight inches across, floating three feet off the ground. She let out a scream as her body flashed with a sudden light. Her body went limp, then also floated upward, joining the twenty bodies above her. So we thought about how people go about finding memories that seem hidden. Hypnosis. Oh, come on, hypnosis! We need to work together to find out how we can restore memories to all of our Hollow citizens. You've got the wrong guy for all this. But what do you expect me to do? Speedrun Mario Brothers 3 until Valhalla gives up? <laughs> Come on now. I've remembered some things. How we got in here. What we're supposed to do. I know your place in all of this. And you did too. In fact, I think that's exactly why you volunteered. Have you ever played one of those video games where every time you die, you start the game over with everything completely changed? Like the enemies, maps, weapons, abilities, everything is different. Well, that's my life. My name is Benjamin Bowers, but you can just call me Benny. I have now died over 50 times, but I am done with that now. No more death. The entire world is depending on me now. Whatever that's supposed to mean. I'm Bilbo Baggins, and Gandalf just came into my life to turn everything upside down. And the only thing to do at this point is to embrace the adventure. Rogue Life, Episode 9, Decree. Benny, do you remember that project that you always had in your back pocket? That video game that you always thought you could make? Which one? I mean, I had so many ideas. There was Black and Smith, which that one was the one that was kind of like Zelda, but from a townsperson's perspective. Mind the Gasp, which is a soul-psych platformer where you play as a brain, but you're actually like fighting zombies. No, no, the one with the king who keeps adding all the new laws to the town. Decree? Yeah. That one never exactly made it very far. I remember when you were trying to make it, you ran into something just like what James was saying. Adding too many rules that contradicted each other. Yeah, it would crash the game. I could never really find a way around it, really. It just got way too complicated. And I'm not actually a programmer, so I... I just like to play around. Come on, Benny. You know a hell of a lot more than you give yourself credit for. You just always gave up too easily. You get too lazy and unmotivated. I'm not sure that you understand how compliments work. There's something that you would always say as the systems got confused and crashed. These laws are just dumb. The king is an idiot. Maybe all of the town people should just revolt. Well, yes, the laws were dumb. I should know. I wrote them. So how about we get all the townspeople to revolt? What? I agree with Mr. Peterson over there. What? Look, if us acting against Valhalla is pushing it into high gear, what if all the citizens did the same? You saw how quickly the system would react to the three of us. Who knows the actions that it would take if multiple inhabitants all disobeyed? Mr. Newsom would not endorse such reckless behavior. It would be disastrous. It would be horrible. It would be apocalyptic. <gasps> Exactly! Apocalyptic! Apocalyptic is bad, Mr. Bowers. I've died enough times to say that the apocalypse doesn't sound bad at all. It is not worth the risk. Must I remind you that the cure for all diseases is at stake here, Miss Larkin? And what good is that if you are stuck in here forever, Mr. Peterson? Look, if the only way to take advantage of this immortality is to live as a mindless slug or be hunted every second of your life, your precious cure would mean nothing. Immortality means everything, Mr. Bowers. Do you have a better idea than James? That's what I thought. 
I may not have a better idea, Miss Larkin, but it seems that I have to be the one who reins things in and adds some common sense to your scheming. <laughs> now? Now you are exercising restraint? I must ensure the safety of all of the residents of Valhalla. I will make one simple request. Only one of us should leave the sanctuary to maximize the time before the cycle resets. Additionally, the one who leaves should play the role the Valhalla assigns as closely as possible to avoid suspicion. Well, if it's acting that you want, then obviously it shall be me! No, Mr. Bowers. Miss Larkin will need to go. I need you here. Excuse me? The two of you found the objects that you carried through the mayhem cycles. I found these. A laptop? Not just a laptop, Mr. Bowers. This laptop is connected to Valhalla. It is unprecedented access to the management of the system. It seems that we've had Valhalla enough hacker thrillers to make our very own deus ex machina. Sorry for the pun, because, you know, a laptop is a machine. And why would you need me? I am a scientist, Mr. Bowers. I am a mathematician. I am not, however, adept at computers. So you honestly just expect me to go out there by myself, acting like whatever the world has me set to become, and arrange a revolution? We will be able to assist, Miss Larkin. Be your man in the chair, as they say. Here, an earpiece. That should let you hear us, no matter what madness you find yourself in. Guys, I know that we've been busy, you know, talking in here for a while, but have you noticed that things look a bit more 11th century in here? Huh. Wooden carvings everywhere. Banners on the wall. Wooden shields and spears hanging everywhere. And let me check. <clears throat> it's definitely a different world out there, too. Snowy mountainside. Quaint little village huts. Valhalla seems to have reverted to its original state. We have been out of the system long enough. Uh, not everything. That crack from punching the wall is still there. Guess I <coughs> don't know my own strength. These muscles can <sighs> break reality as we know it. <laughs> oh, please. Hey, uh... Lauren, before you head out there, can we, can we talk, like, privately? Sure. Um, James, how do you stop them from recording? Jen, please give them a minute to themselves, thank you. Let's go over there. So, um, that was kind of insane, right? I'm still 90% sure that this whole thing is some sort of funky dream. You know, Roseanne series finale style. What do you want to talk about, Benj? <sighs> Look, this whole experience has been kind of eye-opening for me, and I didn't expect to be here with you for all of it. But I've got to say, it's, it's actually been kind of nice. Benny, I know where you're going with this, and i got to stop you right there. I found a really great guy in Derek. I know, I know, I know, I know. What we had is really and truly done. It's been three years, we've both moved on. What I want to know is, why? I mean, what happened between us? I know that I'm not exactly catch of the day material, but was I really that bad? It's... It's not that, Benny. We're just... We just aren't compatible. We don't work well together. I don't know about that, Lauren. I mean, we've survived how many mini apocalypses in the last week together? Sure, given the right circumstances, we can complement each other well. But we both have issues that make it so we wouldn't have ever been able to last. Look, you know me. You know that I'm a bit neurotic, controlling even. 
that's true. Have you ever taken a step back to wonder why I'm that way, Benj? Like, seriously, I don't mean to come across like a bitch. Since the divorce, I've done a lot of work on myself. I've been in therapy for the last two years. My therapist helped me to realize that I get anxiety when I feel like I'm not progressing. And I push others to help me feel like I am also making positive changes in myself. So, what? I don't know how to progress? I don't know. Kinda? Look, Benny, when I met you, you had all of these grand plans and projects. You were studying how to code. You had friends around you helping you along the way. You had a path forward. I thought to myself, this guy may just be working in customer service, but he's pushing himself to the top. I know, I, I know. It's been seven years since then, Benj. Seven years. All of your friends that you had helping you, they're gone. They couldn't wait around. You have not come close to finishing a single project. You are still in the same customer service job. <laughs> Hell, you wouldn't even take a coaching role at Reset Button. You could be running projects that are published there, but if anything tried to push you outside of your comfort zone or got a bit too hard, you'd drop it. Me, I'd, I'd try to push you and you'd just shut down more. And then I'd get frustrated because I felt like you were stopping my progress because of your laziness. Did, did you ever stop to wonder why I am the way that I am, Lauren? Look, I make decent money. I don't need much. Yeah, I have grand plans, and they will happen, but I had to wait for the right idea and the right timing. You can't just let the world pass you by, Benny. Waiting for the right moment? That's a load of shit. You know that, right? You're just scared of change. Well, aren't you? I mean, come on, look around. The world that we are in is constantly changing. You wanted me to get pushed? Fine. Consider me pushed. Am I any better off? Are you? Yes. Yes, of course we are. These challenges have changed me. I've learned. I've grown. And so have you. Don't deny it. You've changed more in the last two weeks than our, in our entire four years of marriage. I couldn't get you to change brands of toilet paper, but earlier today, you faced down an army of goblins. Orcs, actually, you were the goblin. Whatever! This place removed your fear of failure because you knew that you were destined to fail. Every day would end with you dying. When the worst that could happen to you keeps happening, you suddenly started to take the risks. Look, things between the two of us won't work out, but whatever you face in the future, you are better set to succeed. You don't need someone like me to push you to move because that would never work anyway. You will move because staying still won't get you anywhere. You will move because the world will change without you. So you might as well be that change, Benny. The world is better with your influence. <clears throat> Sorry to interrupt, but it seems that we have a visitor that may be able to help us. Is that a freaking Pegasus? Seems to be. Lauren, it looks like you are meant to be a Valkyrie. Um... That is awesome. And you know, it, it, it's kind of hot. Benny. Ah, I know, I know, I know. Take this earpiece. Describe what is happening and we will advise from our end. Try to get people to come here. They will resist as they are programmed to do so but we need to instill urgency in them to get here as quickly as possible. Guys, when they get back here, what do we do? Try to wake them up or something? Um, they did not undergo the same conditioning as the three of us. They may not be easy to break. Hey, listen. How about one of the two of you plays Valkyrie instead? What? No, I, I'm the guy in the chair. James, come on, I'm sure that you're ready for adventure. I am needed to try to deprogram the subjects. I can't go. Oh, come on, Lauren. Why not? I just can't, okay? What? You can't be afraid of heights, right? 
You kept trying to get me to try skydiving. No, no. It's just... Ah. Equinophobia, Mr. Bowers. Also called hippophobia. She didn't seem very scared of that hippo in the Trial of the Ancients. No, no. Hippophobia is fear of horses, Mr. Bowers. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> is that why you always left the room when I started watching My Little Pony? Do you have nightmares of Pinkie Pie coming to get ya? No, I would leave the room because you were a 30-year-old man watching My Little Pony. And I was for some reason married to you. A cartoon is different from <laughs> that. Oh, come on, Lore. He likes ya. Don't ya? Don't ya? <laughs> oh, come on. Don't look at me like that. Besides, whatever happened to taking risks? <sighs> Deep breaths. Okay, I can do this. Hey there, little guy. You have to show them respect. Try bowing to him, prisoner of Azkaban style. <laughs> Great. Mr. Peterson, is that Jen lady still recording? Because I want to watch this on repeat once we're out of Shut here. Shut up, Benny. Is, is the horse still looking at me? Can I lift my head? This creature is programmed to respect you, Miss Larkin. You need not fear it. So say you. Listen, horsey. <laughs> okay, okay, look. We need to work together, okay? People need our help. Seem not so bad, right? I hate all of this. Miss Larkin. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, James. All right. There is a small gathering of villagers about two clicks south of our current location. Well, Lor, good luck. I'll be on the other end with James. You can do this. <laughs> and so can you. <laughs> Let's get this over with. Rogue Life is written by Brady Flanagan and John Crowder. Directed and edited by Brady Flanagan. Original music by Brady Flanagan and Willis Kramer. Starring Brady Flanagan, Megan Sticht, Anthony Lovato, Michelle Gardner, John Crowder, Jason Wilde, Bob Bedore, Casey Wayman, Kevin Buckner, Melinda Yeaman, Caleb Berger, Becky Haney, Tyler Clausen, Tony Soriano, Brooks Bedore, narrated by Sarah Swenson and Nick Tanner. Sound effects by Shalice Craig, art by Blake Haywood, beta readers Mary Knowles, John Marucci, and Matt Foley. Story consultants Stephen Bradford and Kevin Buckner. Next time on Rogue Life. Lauren confronts her worst fears as she takes to the skies in Episode 10, Ride of the Valkyrie.